you are a regular reader of the xrdocs.io pages, you certainly noticed that one of the most prolific authors is Tejas. He wrote many articles on diverse topics like LPTS, Access List, and BFD, every time going to great length to describe the implementation of these technologies. I proposed him to conclude his series on BFD with some kind of an interview. I asked him questions and he recorded answers. And that's now. First thing first, can you please introduce yourself? I'm Tejas Lard, and I'm a technical marketing engineer in the Cisco MIGB. So we'll talk about BFD today. Could you please explain what is BFD and what is the purpose of this technology? It's a good question to start with. So as we all know, convergence of business critical applications is very important for any network infrastructure. BFD, also known as bidirectional forwarding and detection, is low overhead and provides short duration failure detection between two forwarding engines. So as you can see, the main motivation behind this protocol is to provide faster failure detection. So what kind of interfaces or protocols can be used with BFD? We support BFD on physical interface, sub-interface, bundle interface, bundle sub-interface, BVI interface, and we also support the BFD over BGP multi-hop. Now, can you please describe what's a typical BFD session? BFD control packet is defined in RFC 5880. It is 32-bit in size. It contains various fields which are necessary for a successful establishment of neighborship. Let us log into a router and check that. We have the version which is a 3-bit field. We can see it is version 1. We can see the state which is up. There are various flags which are required for the successful establishment of neighborship. These are the important fields as per the RFC 5880. We can see the my discriminator value and your discriminator value. The my discriminator value is a unique non-zero value generated by the transmitting system and the your discriminator field is received from the corresponding remote system. We can see the configured values for the timers and multipliers. We can also see the negotiated values. We have different flags which indicates what a BFD session type is. So when a BFD packet is received on the router or generated, where does it happen exactly? Is it in the route processor, in the line card CPU, or even some specific element inside the forwarding ASIC itself? So BFD implementation varies platform to platform. If you consider NCS 5500 and 500 series platforms, the BFT is offloaded to the network processing unit. The BFT hardware offload improves scale and also reduces the network convergence time by sending rapid BFD control packets for faster network convergence. In the ingress pipeline, BFD is processed in two passes. The OAMP engine is the most important part when considering the BFD feature. The OAMP engine is a dedicated hardware which helps process the BFD packets. We have dedicated XRDocs article which explains the BFD architecture on NCS 5500 and NCS 500 series platforms. I would highly recommend the listeners to visit that article for further details. So BFD scale is a recurring question we see. Could you please explain why it's not so easy to summarize an answer to just a single figure? The OAMP engine, as I said before, is the most important part when considering the resources for BFD. But the resources in OAMP engine are divided between BFD and other critical features. We have single path sessions, we have multipath sessions, we have V4 BFD sessions, we have V6 BFD sessions. So, you know, considering all these criteria, we have successfully carved the resources optimally so that we can provide the right amount of BFD scale considering different use cases and different customer scenarios. So I see you talk about timers and multipliers. Could you please explain what are these concepts? Yeah, sure. BFD timers and multipliers are configurable values which the users can configure 
for faster failure detection as per their use cases. If they want faster failure detection, they can configure shorter timer values. The multiplier specifies minimum number of consecutive packets that can be missed before a session can be declared down. So what about configuration? How do you configure BFD and, and how can we monitor it? To understand better, let us log into the router and check. So we have a BFD session configured with ISIS's client on physical interface with BFD minimum interval and BFD multiplier. These are configurable values. We have the BFD fast detect IPv4. Now let's check the BFD session in detail. We have an IPv4 session, the interface details, the state is up. We can see the different flags for the session, the received parameters and the transmitted parameters. We can see the my discriminator value in received parameters matches your discriminator in transmitted parameters. Similarly, your discriminated value in received is matching the transmitted my discriminator value. This should match. The client is ISIS. We also know that the sessions are hardware offloaded. We can see the hardware offload value. The Y va value means yes. We can also see the platform info. It seems that BFD over bundle links is slightly more challenging. What are the options available today? BFD over bundle is a bit different. We have two flavors. BFD over bundle is also known as BOB. BFD over logical bundle is known as BLB. In BOB, we consider the BFD per member link, whereas in BLB, we have BFD over the entire bundle interface. So when considering BOB, the BFD client will be bundle manager. And if you consider BLB, the BFD clients will be the individual routing protocols. BFD over bundle, which is BOB, is a single path session, whereas BLB is a multipath session. So what do you mean exactly with single path and multipath sessions? Single path sessions are the BFD sessions over physical interface, physical sub interface and bundle interface. Whereas multipath sessions are the sessions over virtual interface between two connected peers. BFD over the virtual interface are treated as multipath sessions because of the asymmetry in the routing. Considering NCS 5500 and 500 series platforms, we support both single path and multipath sessions. So, would you recommend more BLB or BLB? Well, this depends on individual use case. If you are just worried about individual link failures, then BOB should serve your purpose. But the challenge with BOB is that it is not supported on sub-interfaces. BOB also does not give true L3 check. If you are looking for true L3 check, then you should go for BLB. So the recommendation should, would be to use BOB and BLB in coexistence mode. We have a dedicated article on XR Docs on different use cases and the scenarios where we should use BOB and BLB in coexistence. I would recommend the listeners to go through that to understand the coexistence feature in more details. Okay, good to know. Any other configuration trick we should be aware of? BFD configurations are quite simple. When you consider single path sessions, you just need to configure the BFD timers and the BFD multiplier and give the BFD v4 or v6 session under the individual clients. If you consider multipath sessions, then we need to enable the knob which will host BLD sessions or multipath sessions on the particular location. So we need to specify the location on which the multipath sessions need to be hosted. And if you are considering the coexistence of BLB and BOB, then we need to configure the mode as well, whether it is inherit or logical inside the BFD configuration. Thanks for your time, Tejas. Also, thank you for all this great publication you made on xrdocs.io. It's really helpful and the community is looking forward to reading more. Stay safe and see you in the next one that will be in a couple of days.